Okay, so this video is how to get DMX working in Unreal Editor without being in play mode. This is a hotly requested feature and somebody just asked me about it, so I wanted to make a video showing one way to do it. I want to preface it by saying this is a really hacky workaround. It's likely to have other problems. There's things that may not function as desired. It may cause performance issues or stability, but so far it's working okay, so I wanted to show one way to do this. I'm assuming you already know how DMX works and how to get it into the engine, and when you're in play, you can get something like this going. Um, if you don't know this already, you should look at another video to get started. And it's also assuming you know something about blueprints, because we need to edit the fixture blueprint to get this to work. Um, so what I did is I copied the um, BP moving head to a new folder, um, and I'm gonna edit that one so I don't muck up the one in my engine content. And in the patch, you need to make sure that this receive DMX in editor is checked. If it's not, it will definitely fail the first time you try it. So that being said, now um, I'm gonna dive in and start editing this thing. So the first thing I really wanna take care of is I'm going to um, need to have some sort of editor tick functionality going on. And to do this, I'm going to abuse the live link component. So I'm going to use the live link controller and when I add this and do on live link update, this is going to give me kind of a pseudo editor tick. Now, um, live links normally used for mocap and for camera tracking and stuff, but what it really is meant to do is control live data. So I don't want this to be running all of the time, so I'm going to create a branch statement here, and that's going to be controlled by a variable, which I'm going to call editor tick enabled. And I'm going to make that public so I can see what is happening in the details panel. You can already see it firing away, which is exactly what I want. I want this kind of tick heartbeat going on. And so now if it is false, we'll do nothing. And if it's true, we're going to do this stuff. So I'm going to um, plug in the delta time here. It's going to fire and do this. And then I want to fire off this thing. but. I don't know the values per attribute. I can't just call this directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get normalized value uh, attribute values and put that in there. Plug this one in here. And now I need to actually just get it. So if I do get fixture patch, now I'm using the component to get the fixture patch and it's gonna push that value attribute map into this function here. All right, so already we're off to a great start. So once this is true, all this should fire and we'll, we'll be in good shape. The other part to this is I need to create the switch logic to toggle this on and off. And I need to um, initialize the fixture. I'm not actually gonna worry about dynamic occlusion. I'll just remove it for now. Um, but I need to do this as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do to do that is create a custom event. So if I do add custom event, I'm gonna call this enable, disable, uh, that's fine. And I need to make sure, call an editor, so it shows up in the details panel for me. And now what I'm gonna do is create another branch. Uh, initially I used a flip-flop to do this, but you can get in a situation where maybe you clicked true on one of them and then it's flipping and flopping and you can't ever get back so manual branch works good and then what I'm going to do is if it's true set it to false and if it's false set it to true so now I've created my flip flop and then essentially from there I want to do the same thing both times so I'm going to do this so this will initialize the fixture. The reason I'm doing it in both cases is I want it to initialize when I start so that it, um, this function here, if I look at the code, um, the first thing it does is create all these dynamic material instances. And so I want it to do that so I'll see the beam, but then when I'm done, I want it to do it again so that it just goes back to this default kind of position here. Um, if you don't do it on the disable, it'll just kind of stay in whatever position it was in when you uh, disabled it, which 
may be okay, but for me, I don't want that. And the other thing I want to do is toggle light visibility. Now, what this does is actually performance enhancement so that if the light is at zero dimmer, it won't draw the beam anymore, which is ideally what it's doing now. There's no beam being drawn, but if I didn't do this on disable, it would still draw it and drag down editor performance. So now in theory, um, we should be good to go. So I think the first time I do this, it's probably, uh, no, nope, that worked right away. Cool. So yeah, so now I can just go to each fixture and enable or disable it. Cool. And if I want to do them both, I can do it like this. I can actually manually do this, um, you know, here, but see when I click this on and off, it's not calling the initialize, so it's not going to work. So I need both parts in order for this to actually do something. Um, yeah, and there I go. So I could actually grab all of them, um, do it all at the same time. And truthfully, the performance like isn't really that bad. Um, but it, you know, if you had dozens of these running and you're doing other things, it it will drag it down. So it's probably not good to just leave these always, because um, essentially it's just you know on tick updating now in the editor, which probably isn't a good. Um, a good thing to do. So something I wanted to check was, could I like enable this and then put them in a position and record this to sequencer? And the answer, unfortunately, is I can't keyframe it because it's not actually modifying these properties directly now. Um, there's a whole system under the hood, of course, that is you know, responsible for creating the instance and doing all the things that the beam does. Um, and we're kind of hijacking some of it. So I can't do it that way. I could possibly do you know do like take a recorder also doesn't really make sense right because it's already just essentially going into play anyway so I, I don't I don't know exactly how useful this is but it has come up several times and so also if I go into play works fine in play no big deal um, and that's mostly just because you know whether I, when I go into play it's gonna still initialize um, but then it's just gonna use this um, uh, it's going to do this event tick logic. It's still getting the live link delta time, so that still all works. And essentially now I'm just doing this on tick instead of on fixture patch receive. So there may be a small performance hit that I'm not using this at runtime, so I suppose I could probably throw in another branch to figure out if you know, begin play, then use this one, um, but you know, whatever you can kind of take it from here. But hopefully that'll give you some ideas on how to do this. Um, I haven't tried it with matrixes. I haven't tried it with anything else. There may be some other lurking problems, um, but it does technically do the job. So hopefully this is helpful and um, good luck.